please go see go see you know Coco over this please I, I don't buy this either I want them they're already made enough money I actually don't want them to do too well no they're in a deficit they have not made anywhere near what they are you serious? It. Yeah. That is amazing. They did not make any more. I'm actually, it. okay, I'm so, I feel so bad that I'm happy that it failed. They're like a poor man's marvel. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Inner Circle. Uh, today we're really excited because today is the day that we get to review the long-awaited Justice League Snyder Cut. So gentlemen, First impressions? It's fine. It was fine. <laughs> it was fine. Um, actually, I, I, I've had kind of a, a, an explanation prepared for, for how I feel about this movie. So, it took all of about 10 seconds for me to mention Star Wars. But here's the thing <laughs> so I grew up with Star Wars. I grew up on the floor with Star Wars Legos, and I had my own characters and shit. And I like to go into my head, and I like to imagine them going on random adventures. I'll put them in random timelines and all this shit, and I don't care about making a compelling villain, a compelling story, a compelling... Way. I don't care about getting anything that makes other people care. I just do it because I want to. I do whatever I want because I'm invested in the characters that I made. And that's how I kind of feel Zack Snyder makes his movies. He is interested in these characters that he's read and watched or whatever he's done. And so he does stuff with them that he wants to see and he's invested because he's the one making it. And then other people are invested because they're familiar with the characters. But he doesn't really do anything to escalate that and make it anything more. <laughs> so so you, you look at the Snyder Cut as being an okay movie, but... Too it's much, too much a, like a turtle sandbox. It's hardly a movie. I wouldn't. <laughs> it's a four-hour thing. It's an experience. It's 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 a self-indulgent four hours of a lot of stuff and scenes happening, and it was way better than I expected. It was coherent. I knew what was happening. Characters were developed more than I thought. More characters were developed more than I thought. I was mostly bored, and I don't know if that's entirely because I knew it was going to happen because of the original cut of the movie. All I can say is I was kind of bored. And somehow I still managed to watch this four-hour thing all at once without getting up a single time. I don't know how, but it was kind of exhausting. It's because we're nerds, Ben. <laughs> I there are there every scene in this movie is good so I was always kind of entertained but there's so much that shouldn't be in it there's so much that could be cut out and like we were saying you were telling me before the review that Zack Snyder just he shot some stuff this will go in this part this will go in this part or something it's not really a movie, but whatever. Five I just, out of I ten. I disagree with you. I disagree with you on that, but we'll get back to that. Clayton, what's your first impression? Okay, well, it's better than the first one because this one's directed by Zack Snyder and not known sexual predator Joss Whedon. <laughs> so taking taking his name off of it uh, is already a plus. I'll um, be honest. I like some of those Brian Singer X Men movies. I'm sorry, he's a sex pervert. Brian Singer. We're talking about Joss Whedon, man. I know, but I, I'm, t I'm just talking... I'm talking about sex perverts. Wait, so Brian Singer is a sex pervert as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, before, yeah. okay, before we get onto that tangent, oh, yeah. can Clayton, please continue. <laughs> it's a, it's four hours long, which is pretty, uh, pretty indulgent, but it's, it uses every bit of that four hours pretty well, apart from... The women singing about Aquaman as he left at the oh beginning, God. that was a little weird. Yeah. Apart from that, it uses the four hours pretty well. Uh, it has a whole cohesive story, begin to end. Most people are developed. Um, 
the villain had he actually has a reason to be there this time. That's nice. Uh, Steppenwolf is like a character and not just evil gray man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that they developed him. So instead of being evil gray man, he's a guy that wants to serve an evil gray man. Yeah, he's a little bitch. And I love the now. scene when Wonder Woman goes into the tomb and sees the drawing of the other big gray man, and we're supposed to be intimidated when it's just another big gray man. But ben, he's a pretty scary gray man, though. Ben, he looked, but you you don't know the dark side, man. You don't know who dark side is. That's okay. Yeah, I'm familiar with the name. I don't know what he's done, but I I know he's like the Thanos of this universe or whatever. But I will go ahead and say Steppenwolf in this movie looked cooler than Dark Side, so I was more interested in him. So fair enough. Yeah. Well, Clayton, any anything I'm else? Is there a grandma next to Dark Side? I'll explain because we're we're gonna talk about the comics. I thought that we're was Judy Dench. It should have been. It should have been Judy Dench. It looks like Judy Dench. It's Zack Snyder's best DC movie, um, which isn't going up against much. It's going up against like Batman vs Superman, which was a train wreck, and Man of Steel, which is like a mediocre movie. So like I don't know. I enjoyed it. I think I feel like. If I'm gonna rate it as any kind of like quality film, uh, when I watched it, uh, it didn't feel I didn't feel like four hours were dragging. It felt it felt long, but long in the way where like an epic thing is just going from like it's. When it when it comes to the Snyder Cut, my my first impressions of it, you know, I I, I went into this movie fully expecting to hate it, one hundred percent. I I'm not a Zack Snyder hater. I appreciate the stuff that he tries to do. Yeah, you're just a mindless nerd. Well, I'm just saying, look, he's he's a very visual director, and he's a fanboy. And those are things that I appreciate. He may I not have, you have the best... Your, your Man of Steel Blu-ray over there, I just noticed it. Which I used to think was an amazing movie, but... I did too. I did too. Uh, I have I've recently found it to be just I. Oh, it took me about, like, two months... Uh, and I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> it, took it, me, like, it took me a while. That was actually a big movie. That was probably the first movie where I, I started to actually develop like a real opinion on a movie. Because it was like dark and and like muted and Superman's like walking around and being depressed and there's like sad music playing. So I thought it was deep and meaningful. Right. And then I watched it a second time and I'm like, wait, no, this is just kind of stupid. <laughs> Well, that's just like that's Zack Snyder's thing. You know, he likes to do a lot of dark and, and brooding characters and characters that aren't necessarily dark and brooding to begin with. He likes to make them dark and brooding, which like that's not. I'm not a huge fan of that either, and I I don't think that he has the best grasp of story structure. He just kind of wants to put cool shit in his movies. Say about the structure of justice of uh, the Snyder cut worked just fine. But yeah, no, that's that's what I wanted to talk about. Is like. This movie is so much more coherent and watchable than Joss Whedon's Justice League. And and here's why. Editing makes such a huge difference. Because the way that they've edited this movie, the shots are framed better, the colors, the CGI, everything's been improved. Uh, They've cut out all the cheesy, like, Marvel-y dialogue, completely changed the tone of the movie. They've added more scenes, two hours of extra scenes. They've actually given Cyborg a full backstory, which... Desperately needed. He it was desperately needed. It was my favorite part of the movie, or at least when it comes to like the, uh, the additions and changes, is uh, the Cyborg and Cyrus stuff. All the way up until Cyrus kind of just kills himself. <laughs> all, the yeah. way, all the way up until that spoilers. moment, that was Mild my... Mild spoilers. <laughs> yeah, no, who, who, no one cares about spoilers. No one cares. This so, movie, this movie, Justice League came out five years ago, and Cyrus dies in the trailer. Does he die in the uh, the original cut? I don't know. I haven't watched wow. it in five years. It was yeah, a bad movie. I don't think so. But yeah, this movie it lets scenes breathe. I find yeah. there like like the 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 first time I noticed was the Themyscira scene, which just seemed like a throwaway scene to explain where the box was and Steppenwolf doing stuff. But in this scene, like, when Steppenwolf shows up, there was, like, it was it was longer, but it was more tense. It felt like there were stakes more mm-hmm. when he was, you know, wiping them out and stuff. So it kind of has that effect. Um, everything, all like he said, all of the, the time is used, and aside from the singing women, everything in it develops. Well, 
I say that, but yeah, I was but just like planning before the movie that Aquaman takes 40 seconds to go into the ocean and he takes his shirt off <laughs> and slow mo yeah. wave. And I literally was like hitting the 10 second skip button. I was like, I don't, I don't get to get to the point. And there's that's a another, lot of that. Another Zack Snyder ism is that he loves to linger on slow mo that's not necessary. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think a lot of it has to do with your perception coming into watching the Snyder Cut, Ben. Because um, it's it's not a normal movie, and it was never going to be released as a like normal movie. Mm -hmm. So you have to you you have to go into it knowing like okay, this is this is going to be every single thing he could possibly squeeze in here as like just a big momentous uh, monument to his own filmmaking right about like, this these DC characters and they're not I don't think they're expecting anyone to watch this movie who's not already familiar with Zack Snyder or these characters and stories and right because so Zack Snyder being a fan like this whole movie exists because of the fans he made this for the fans and like it, it, because it's four hours he intended it to be this big sprawling superhero epic and you know it was smart to split it into parts because you can literally tune in at whatever section you want on HBO Max mm -hmm. um, it felt like and it took me about an hour after watching the movie to figure this out I couldn't think what it reminded me of it reminded me of a Hobbit movie really like <laughs> just everything from like the kind of fake ish look of the bigger action set pieces and the more realistic look of the smaller stuff, the length and how things are slow mo and drawn out, the the backstory with with all the gods and dudes fighting Dark Side for the first time, it felt like a Hobbit movie. And I say Hobbit, not Lord of the Rings, because Hobbit movies are more drawn out and there's a lot of kind of, you know, just scenes of people walking and stuff. Just big like drawn out set pieces yes yeah well at the same time if those set pieces weren't in there you would say that nothing was explained and you didn't understand why they were fighting for anything i will admit if you you could cut this four hour movie down to maybe well get rid of the last 30 minutes that's easy and it would have been better in my opinion but from that three and a half hours you could maybe cut that down again to another 315 310 and that's mm -hmm. more moments Scenes. There wasn't a single scene I thought should have been cut out. Honestly, I thought it all kind of fit. And that's that's what really makes this movie good, in my opinion. Especially when you compare it to Joss Whedon's version, because like every like plot point, every character gets time to develop. Mm -hmm. Like the Flash is no longer cringy. I feel for him and his relationship with his dad in prison. Um, the only characters that I didn't really jive with too much was Wonder Woman and Aquaman. The, the two that had the least to do in the yeah, movie. Yeah, they had like, they, they were important, like they did important stuff during the action scenes, but they, they didn't have too much yeah. fleshed out about them. And to be fair, they didn't really need it because we already have two Wonder Woman movies and an Aquaman movie. Yeah, so. we well, have a Flash or Cyborg you movie. You have to think of, the, think of the context. When this came out, there wasn't any of those yet. This was the first introduction of That's all true. of them. Okay. That's true. I noticed... Context matters when you're watching a film. This is one of those movies that is it's what we call popcorn entertainment. It's like Kong vs. Godzilla, which we will be reviewing, by the way. Like, you, you don't go to a movie like Justice League expecting an Oscar-winning performance or an Oscar-winning plot. You, you go to enjoy your favorite comic book characters fighting the bad guy. Which, good thing you brought up, because I thought most of, most of the acting in this movie was really great. The, like, the, the performances were this really movie, good at what they were doing. Yeah, like, like, apart from Ben Affleck in the last 15 minutes where you could tell it was reshoots from, like, five months ago, because he looked rough. I still think was kind of shit at times. Well, she, she, she's she, flat and everything. She got I mean, the big exposition scene, like, where she was talking about the whole backstory. And which all was her, awesome, I, by the way. That's, that we, was we a got, cool scene. We got the old gods. We got Dark Side. We got a Green Lantern, which, yeah, please... That was cool. Please bring Green Lantern back. Uh, very underrated character. Um, and speaking of underrated characters, I'm okay with the last 15 minutes of this movie, the, the epilogue, because 
They gave us Martian Manhunter. That, well, that was the last, like, two minutes. And then a weird scene where they undermine a nice moment between Martha and Lois by saying it was Manhunter. So that, that, that goes into, like, a thing about this movie is... It, the, the ending and some things throughout, they left in all of the stuff that would have been set up for, like, a few, the future DC movies mm-hmm. after Snyder's Justice League. And I understand they left it all in because, like, present the movie the way it was intended. Mm-hmm. But it, it is, in the, like, in the this post-context we have, it is weird seeing some of that stuff. And it's just like, oh, like, okay, that's that would have been cool, I guess. I just I'm that... happy that we got it though, because Martian Manhunter especially like I grew up with the Justice League cartoon and he's like one of the best characters in that show, that and it just true. to me it's not the Justice League without Martian. But Manhunter. Uh, the point I'm getting at is <laughs> the point I'm getting at is it's weird having all of that setup stuff still in there because it makes things like the the extended. 10, 15 minute version of the nightmare at the end a little stupid and pointless. Originally, that scene was you, that yeah. scene was not that long. It was supposed to be much shorter, but because they were letting Zach finish his movie, he went back and shot more for that nightmare. I agree with you there. I, I think that if they ended the movie with the Manhunter cameo, that would have been perfect. But at the same time, that last scene kind of makes me okay with Jared Leto's Joker now. No. No, that was, that was just as bad as really? Suicide Squad, but... On like the opposite end of the spectrum. I thought it was alright. I just like seeing him have like a dark conversation about their history with Ben Affleck's Batman was cool because yeah. we finally get to see those characters butt heads. But it was in a dream, like. Well, or it could have been the future. We don't know because they're not going to make a sequel. Yes, we the, that, the dialogue that. was cool. It was well written, um, and they got rid of all of Joker's stupid tattoos and awful like alligator skin pimp jacket so that doesn't change anything for me that changes everything for me (laughs) yeah like he might not be damaged now because he doesn't have damaged on his forehead so who knows it doesn't matter at any at the end of the day because like superman probably killed them all (laughs) which okay we're gonna get into things that i don't like about this movie they shafted superman well he he did not get nearly enough he was dead Right, so, he, was, he was dead, so but he I doesn't show him. up until the final fight, just like the Joss Whedon version, but he has less to do in that final fight than they gave him in the Joss Whedon version. Did you want to see the Joss Whedon version, where he comes in, floats around, they played like a Superman theme from 40 years ago that doesn't fit this character, and then he punches Steppenwolf back and forth around the complex for five minutes while everybody else stands around watching. I just think that Superman had really good dialogue at the, the end fight, you know, with the other team members where he's, like, actually talking to them. I just kind of like this version better. He showed up, said, did y'all bring me back to life to stop this? And they're like, yeah. So then he goes and punches the dude's head off, and then it's over. I mean, talk- I like that better. We were talking about the dialogue in the We Didn't Cut. That, like, this is literally the only dialogue in the Whedon yeah. cut that I enjoy. Yeah, so it doesn't fit this Zack Snyder Snoop Superman, but that that little... Ver- I like that version of Superman that we got in the Whedon cut. I like some of his lines. Like, it felt like kind of... I, I haven't seen the Christopher Reeves movie. I've seen scenes, but, I mean, it, it kind of gave me the feeling that I imagine those movies would give me of, like, that kind of more lighthearted, uh, kinder Superman... And I just it, it felt appropriate to me because it was like a, a nice balance between the Superman that I know and then the Superman in Man of Steel. But I will say though, I got really I liked when Superman showed up in this cut a lot because even though I don't care about these movies, the soundtrack for Man of Steel was the first movie soundtrack I ever really downloaded on my phone. I love that score and when like I got really pumped when that kicked in. Like when he starts punching Steppenwolf and that theme comes in, like Whatever you guys might feel watching, like, your favorite characters in these movies, like, that's one of my favorite scores ever. So when that came in, I was like, oh, shit. And then when Superman was punching, oh, yeah, him, no, I was like, like fuck yes. The, the music in, all, like, all of Zack Snyder's movies are pretty spot-on it, beautiful. It was just Junkie XL this time around, so it was a little... It was a little limited. It was just kind of Mad Max. There were no developed themes. It was mainly kind of the Mad Max noise, but I liked it, and it had more presence than the... Whedon cut score, which I like some moments, but overall it's 
it was just kind of like the we didn't cut score was recycled man of steel music plus recycled music from old superhero movies i uh, yeah that people used to like back yeah in the... yeah i mean i i appreciate that they tried to incorporate those themes but i agree with you it just it doesn't fit it's a misstep with snyder's even though even though i don't like batman v superman i hate that movie <laughs> so much but watching that and hearing that Superman theme, I was like, this is weird. I really have a love-hate relationship with all of the DC movies. But basically, the, the point the point is, I was, I'm okay with how Superman's portrayal in the Snyder Cut. I like it more than I do the Whedon Cut, because in this constant, in this, con, this series of movies, this continuity timeline, whatever you want to call it, and the series of movies here, it makes much more sense and fits way better that he's not like... Ha ha, I'm yeah. gonna be quippy now. Mm -hmm. He shows up, he's like, hey Batman, I'm back. Uh, you want me to f beat this dude to death? Okay, I'll go beat it's, him to death. It's still badass to see I, him just like, you know, freeze the axe and shatter it like yeah. nothing. I <laughs> wish I wish Steppenwolf was more of a match for Superman. Cause he I, agree. Showed, I wanted yeah. a little more of that fight, but he just shows up and literally there's a moment where Batman is like standing on top of the thing and looking down and it's just like he's this just shot, watching. yeah. He's just, just over beating the crap out and of him. over. That's that's, that's that's it. That's fun. That's fun. But that was that was it. Their whole like, their whole fight was uh, Superman broke the X, punched Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf punched him <laughs> once, and it did nothing. And then Superman just literally beat the hell out of him, and that was it. Well, it was I, over. I, I also like how um, it was very subtle, but even though Darkseid is is technically like a DC universe, like whole universe villain, kind of like how Doctor Doom is for the Marvel comics now. I Bad really, comparison. I, I really, the Thanos comparison works much better. Yeah, Thanos. Um, but uh, I, I really see him as a Superman villain, mainly because of my fandom for the Superman cartoon from the nineties. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that, there's that look. They 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 make eye contact through the portal. That, just Dark Side and Superman. As somebody who doesn't know anything about Dark Side, that gave me chills. Like yeah. that moment felt really special. It felt. Like and it oh should. shit, something's coming. It should. And because... then you remember the grandma standing to dark side, and you laugh a little bit. Yeah, I, I, li <laughs> okay, I literally so... noticed the grandma in that scene. I was like, I got chills, and then I was like, is that Judy Dench? Anyway, anyway, so the cool thing about Dark Side and Seven Wolf and all those characters is they're a part of the New Gods, which was a Jack Kirby creation, who's like one of the most famous comic book creators of all time, uh, and uh, three gray dudes, grandma. Right. Well, the new gods well, are and, just... and about five warrior women, but we didn't see them. That's the, the, the new gods and trolls. It, it's really just like a grab bag of completely different characters meshed together. Like it's literally sort of like an acid trip superhero comic. So you've got Darkseid, who's like this stone faced Titan type character, and then you have the Sod, who's the cloaked guy. He's like, sounded like Cad Bane. Yeah, he's like this sort of wiry like. Um, like in, like intellect like advisor type mm -hmm. um and then granny goodness that's her name yeah, yeah. that's her real name <laughs> granny goodness she's <laughs> you're fucking joking i'm not joking granny goodness <laughs> is like the the uh i don't i'm sorry i yeah granny goodness is like the character that dark side has what who um like trains his military and she puts on this facade of, like, the caring mother, but she's actually the opposite. She's extremely cruel. Are they going to call her... Or would That's they what her name is. Would they have called her that in these movies? Granny Goodness. Yeah, that is her name. She looks like a human. She is a human. She looks right. like... Right. Well, where'd that come from? Not all the new gods look like aliens. Some of them look like humans. Because they are technically gods. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, this, this is just another thing that... you comic book people know and you know general audits i figured don't. it was a reference to something i don't think judy dench would just be standing next to him for no reason well it's also like it's a character that you wouldn't make a main presence in this kind of movie you would yeah. just throw it in there as like a nice little fan service well it's not fan it's more it's mostly just a part of making sure your world's consistent right right because yeah in, in the case of if there were sequels she would have had to have been there because dark side uh, he has a whole army and he has his commanders for his army so like you can't not have her there, because then it'd be like, why is that, that character supposed to be there? So it's there, but it's not talked about because it's not important, which is fine. Right, yeah. Even um, if she looks a little out of place next to all the other big monster men. 
as a comic book fan, what I really hope, like if the, if Warner Brothers is smart and they decide to continue the Snyderverse, they're not. They're, they're not, they're not going to. But if they did, I would love to see them bring in Mister Miracle. And for those of you that don't know, just just go read Mister Miracle. It is one of the greatest graphic novels to come out in the last few years. You won't regret it. And it's completely irrelevant to the Snyder Cut of Justice League. It's a re- it's relevant. Mister Miracle's a part of the New Gods. It's okay. <laughs> Clayton, you can cut this part out. Okay, so yeah, six and a half out of ten, uh, pretty well, good. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna transition. I'm sorry, Clayton. Well, all right, we're gonna sort of get into our final thoughts here, give it our ratings. Um, I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and start. You know, I fully expected to hate this movie. Um, it's much better than Joss Whedon's version. I had a fun time with it. A lot of great fan service. Um, Cyborg and Flash are fleshed out in a really good way. Um, excited to see the new gods finally get the big screen treatment and Martian Manhunter. I'm going to give it a 8 out of 10. Oh. 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 What, 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 what do you give it, Ben? I give it a 6. I'd... I'd probably give it a little higher if I included the fun I had figuring out what the differences were. Because that, that was like the main reason I watched it, is because I, I remember the Just Whedon cut. I remember watching it. I remember the stuff that was in it. And I, I had fun like, this is from this, this is from this. That's what I was most interested in. Um, but excluding that kind of enjoyment as its own thing, I give it a six. It's way better than I thought it was going to be. Batman v Superman might be my least favorite movie I've ever seen, and I was blown away by the fact that I didn't hate it, that it wasn't a complete cluster, and honestly, I'm probably never going to do this, but it made me briefly at least consider, maybe I should watch the extended cut of Batman v Superman, and maybe it won't be as big of a clusterfuck as I remember it's, being. It's still a, a depressing clusterfuck. I'm it not going to watch it. it the story just makes more sense, because there's like stuff that explains some of the weird oh. stuff. That's okay. Okay, but, um, yeah, Justice League, uh, characters were fun because they had four hours to develop everybody, so, like, they were all interesting for the most part, apart from Wonder Woman, who was still kind of boring. Um, the plot was fine. It's actually structured. You know, they set up something early, and by the end of the movie, it pays off at least a little bit, like a, a normal, average movie should. Um... Action scenes were great, because it's a Zack Snyder movie. The action scenes are usually always great and really loud. So old people need to watch it with earplugs. Uh, <laughs> God, what else? Um, they they did... They had the Flash do what the Flash always needs to do. And Oh yeah, the Flash had yeah. the best... Flash's uh, introduction was the best scene in the movie. Uh, that was really fun. And uh, it's shot beautifully because it's once again Zack Snyder movie. Usually they're shot really well. I give it a six, six and a half. Uh, I, I mildly enjoy DC, so I knew I understood things in this movie that other normal or normal other people who don't really get into DC <laughs> wouldn't understand. Typical average moviegoers that aren't super. Oh yeah, they wouldn't get it either. They're not like niche comic book fans. <laughs> I get it. It's six and a half. It's a little a little better than an average movie, but it's not like it's a really good territory. I should show this to my 58-year-old mother and record her uh, reaction. Your mother's old as fuck. 58? <laughs> I hope she has her will written up. Holy shit. <laughs> well, before we end this video, um, I guess we, we should oh, that was say <laughs> no. thank you, Zack Snyder, for Getting this done, thank you fans. Um, it's kind of unprecedented that this happened. Thank you for being an asshole in all my comments when I told people that it didn't exist. Which I was right! It didn't exist! That's why they had to spend so much money to finish it, it turns which is out, what I said! It turns out it did exist, and they just didn't finish the CGI because they quit working on it and that's recut what I, it. That's what I was saying. I was like, they shot most of the movie. It's like, it's there, but it doesn't exist. Be, like, it's not finished. I'm know. not happy, Warner Brothers. Give me the Schumacher cut of Batman Forever. Give me... The... Release the Schumacher cut of release... Batman Forever. What, wait, release the... Uh, re-
to be a gray and tower alone on the sea. You became the light on the dark side of me. Love remains a drug that's the high and not the pill. But did you know that when it snows, my eyes become a light and the light that you shine can't be seen.